the second argument has not any or enough relevant discussion. Even though it should ideally be the starting point of any discourse on reservation and other affirmative action. Note by the argument there is no caste based discrimination in the rural India, or that there was no such discrimination historical in India. The fact is that certain castes, such as Dalits, have been socially excluded from the full participation in the Indian society and economically over the past few centuries. There is document and evidence that in the Indian village, Dalit continue to be denied equal access to public and private goods such as water, bodies, roads, land ownership, market, financial institutions, and the work and the jobs. As a result, the members belonging to such caste exist poor social section, indicators such as higher rate of poverty, lower literacy rate, and higher infant morale. However, that is rural India. But about the modern urban India, a casual glass at the metropolitan section in our Sunday newspaper shows that caste plays a major role in our social space, but there is an active discrimination in the modern private sector economy. Since profit and efficiency are the guiding principle in a market economy, the claim is that only the most efficient workers are in fact, leaving no room for any discrimination in the basis of the caste and other identities. For instance, in 2007, economic magic claimed that there is no strong evidence that companies discriminate against the low caste job application. However, such articles misses the nations which does not show the Dalits and other backward class caste are in fact discriminate, discriminate against even in the modern private sector. One of more telling studies on such discrimination was conducted by economic professor Shukdev Karat and K.S. Niman is clear in 2005 or 6. They used the recommendations control trial RCT method to explore how the job application by highly capable educator Indians from various caste background are received by the modern urban private sector, including the permanent Indian and multinational companies. The scholar collected the advertisement for job offering from the several national and regional newspapers, including the Times of India, Hindustan Times, The Hindu, Deccan Coronavirus, and others. They used only those offering which well recent graduate would be eligible for in the sector such as IT, pharma, finance, accounting, automobiles, mass media, construction, banking, and other universities like JNU and Delhi University. These advertisements were, uh, were then responded by submitting fake resume which had immediate educational qualification and work experience. The resume were all strong enough to be considered for the hiring. The only thing that worried in these resume was the same sum had so-called higher caste sounding name like Mishra, Bhardwaj, Sharma, etc. and such with distantly Dalit name as described by the researcher like Chauhan, Pawar, or anything else. In all, 4,808 applications were made for 548 joke advertisement. The judges were that an application with a Dalit name had only a 60, 87 chance of being called for the second round as compared by the applicant of any equal qualified education people, so called Hindu. The same study was revealed by the Muslim name application had only 33 point chance of being accepted for the next round when compared to an equal qualified high caste Hindu name application. This is not only such study conducted, a study in 2009 in Chennai showed the lowest, uh, lowest job application called BACs are received by the Dalit women compared to other intersectional caste and gender identity. Another study in 2007, I am a research scholar and I am teaching in Delhi University, so uh, my talk is based on research evidence. So I am comparing that thing. Another study in 2007 had tracked students from the three uh, premier Indian universities like Rio, JNU, and Chandra in India Islam as they went about applying for the job. This study revealed that the employees were extremely conscious of their social identity such as caste for the applicant, such as they claimed to only care for merit of the candidates. Additionally, 
people such as those for Surendra Jotka and Sajan Tan. Surendra Jotka is a professor of Jain and he is a research scholar about the history of case study of uh, uh, Dalits and Muslim community in the uh, India Dalit movement also. He uh, studied Dalit entrepreneurs face uh, difficulties in starting up new ventures since private sectors play a major role in attending rent. Credit access to private network plays a major role in attending the rent. Credit access to dealer network. Dalit entrepreneurship suffer because of lack of such a support system due to historical exclusion. This is especially true in the case of knowledge based industries where entrepreneurship receive the industry knowledge by those of their own caste and linguistic background. None of these, of course, justify the private sector caste based reservation on its own. That's different debate for a different time. However, that caste based discrimination exists in the private sector must not be brushed aside by the narrative of efficiency and profit market. Various affirmative action hand and capacity building measures can be bold over time, although hopeful with urgency. But at the very least, we must accept that caste identities are known as an individual as the invisible hand of the market. Second, uh, I want to elaborate this in that there is a law to end the reservation of other beings. When the literacy is law, how will a technology-based system work? Digitization will also lead to a disconnection of the masses from the core of social issues. Liberalization of Indian economy instead during the early 1990s proved to be an important turning point for the country in many different ways. Under the new regime, the state began to withdraw from its direct involvement with the economy. Private enter enterprise was allowed and encouraged to expand into the area of economic activities and were it through no local unit. <coughs> Though some scholars have pointed out that the growth of private capital in India began to uh, accelerate during the early 1970s, it is during the post-1991 period that private capital experienced expansion and unacceptable uh, rates. This exception uh, was not merely in the terms of growth rate and profit. India also experienced an important ideological shift during 90s. The social rhetoric that has been so controlled on the universal idea of that government lost its charm. Market and middle classes came to occupy the central stage of India's culture landscape displacing and emblatic village and its poor peasants. Though nearly 75% of its population continue to live in the more than half a million villages and the majority uh, remain implied in agriculture. India began to be so uh, case to burn through its rapidly growing urban centers, its professional middle classes and its diaspora also. Indian economics have uh, radical evidence to show that India's growth has not merely being middle class centric a number of those living low. Poverty line has also been declining at a rate which is uh, much faster than pre-1991 period. However, economic data does not capture the entire social reality. For example, the new economic policy produced a sector imbalance and the legacy of the agrarian sector proved tragic. India witnessed a sudden spot in the case of societies by the small and marginalized farm. Surprisingly, despite sufficient signal variation in the pattern of aggregate change, I can understand. I have only my slides. I, I can conclude by this. Uh, it's happened uh, similarly in the different parts of the uh, country from Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh to Maharashtra and Punjab. It is difficult to overlook the connection between the aggregate crisis and large process of economic liberalization. Given the composition of democratic system, the Indian polity had to soon respond to this crisis through such of it has been averted in nature simply through the increased societies and known behaviors. The process of economic liberalization has also been criticized by the ideological or historical marginalized section of the Indian society. The scheduled caste and the scheduled tribe, apart from the advocates from the farm sector, the declining avenue of the employment in the state sector, job available under the quota system of SCs and SCs have been declining. The expanding role of the private sector in technical and professional education may also be in the shrinking of the quota system in higher education. In fact, the official data is beginning to show that 
those belonging to different schedule caste, tribe, and Muslim majority have been experienced a process of further marginalized in non society and economic caste. I have uh, divided three aspects one, caste and corporate sector, but in the situation of the caste in India, Indian and government is the situation of corporate sector in the caste based system. I uh, won't go there, it, but uh, time is, uh, I think it has not much. No? Uh, second point, merit and uh, discriminatory protective factors. How uh, we increase the merit of Dalit's community and discriminatory practice in all the private sector and uh, business uh, or digitization process and other thing, uh, the, uh, form of the uh, living good. And third one is that our uh, gaming and social development also, I, uh, I, I wrote some points on that thing. Television and social development is also a digital uh, process. I will conclude with that thing also. Uh, now, I, I think uh, time has gone up and I conclude my paper. The technology at one level brings priority, but at the same time ensure that all social issues are not discussed and deliver deliberately upon the technology party will never end the social security. It will only strengthen that. When the proliferation of technology that are able to overcome the obstacle of the time and space, aeroplanes, cars, internet, etc., one would think that these tools would be used to gain an understanding of their culture, meet people all over the world, maintain and strengthen the human relationship, communication effective with others, and help people become more socially adapted. However, the same technology advances to cause people to be distracted. Overall, stress and increasingly isolated many people are involved in an abundant member, uh, number of relationships through the technology, but sometimes the quantity of the association leaves people feeling qualitative empathy. Obviously, technology has had a profound uh, impact on what it means to be the social. In conclusion, I can say we can I can we can say that digitalization tribe is not taking account the real social issues. It is not striking at the root of socio-economic principal problems of the society. If the technology party is not going to end the social disparity, it will rather reinforce it any such move without alternating the fundamentals of the social setup is not going to help much. The technology growth will not change the mindset of the Indian people. Thank you so much.